Okay, this is a challenge following Ethan to start out with. Okay, well, I am the director of the Cannabis Consumers Campaign, and wearing that hat right now, I'd like all the proud cannabis consumers to just stand up, wave your arms in the air, <laughs> stomp your feet, <laughs> and pat each other on the back for coming out of the closet. Okay. I get to tell you about how I spent 2006, which was working with local committees around the state uh, with Susan Stevenson of The Next Generation as a political consulting company and the Marijuana Policy Project to draft the language, to solicit petitioners, and to work on the campaigns across California that passed lowest law enforcement priority for marijuana offenses initiatives and ordinances in five cities. And those cities were Santa Barbara, Santa Monica, Santa Cruz, San Francisco, and West Hollywood. Yay. So why did, we, why did we even want to do lowest law enforcement priority initiatives and ordinances? Well, the goal obviously was to stop the arrest and prosecution of adults for nonviolent marijuana offenses, to enable law enforcement to concentrate on violent and serious crimes, set priorities for them. And uh, also we wanted to make it more, we, what we did with these um, initiatives was insert language that had requirements for the police to fill out supplemental reports. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that they, making it more cumbersome cumbersome for them to, uh, to make these kinds of arrests. Also to have some oversight to ensure that there was implementation of this, these um, initiatives to issue reports so we can track the arrests and how it's working to accept grievances from the public, and also issue recommendations on the social and financial impact of this policy and, uh, and another thing was to communicate with our government elected officials at the state and federal level that we had passed these initiatives, these are our policies of our local governments, and that we want them to work at the state and federal level as well to pass similar initiatives or similar uh, policies. And in Santa Cruz and San Francisco, we also inserted language about taxing and regulating the sales of cannabis as well. So. Um, all of the initiatives make these, um, include in this policy a non-cooperation element with the DEA, because we don't want them to go back to, you know, calling in the, the DEA when they're not making the bus. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Uh, and prohibiting deputization of the police to work with the feds as well, and all of them passed with 64 to 66% of the vote, so we are happy about that. So what did we achieve with these victories? Well, the first thing is that we got the city clerks of all these cities to issue letters to the federal and state representatives, letting them know that we want similar changes at the state and federal level. Um, in Santa Cruz and San Francisco's case, as I said, we also in inserted that we want to legalize, tax, and regulate cannabis. Um, so now all the representatives know, because the let letters have been issued, that that um, their constituents ha support this um, policy and that they should feel safe now for voting for reform or for sponsoring it. So um, I have also pa this postcard, I hope you can pick up, and we have them over here on my table, about taxing and regulating, regulating um, cannabis. At taxandregulate.org, you can uh, look up the initiative language so you can find out what they say. And also, I'd recommend checking out drugsense.org slash CAIP. They also have a, a listing of all the initiatives all over the country as well, and that's a really good resource. So it's too early to tell how these are really being implemented because we don't have any reports written yet. Uh, the committees have just started forming. They've just had a couple meetings, so we... We're not sure how it went in, San Fran in Santa Monica, which was rather hostile to our initiative by the city council to start out with. 
um, they're now a little bit more open to discussing dispensaries in their town. And recently they had a welcoming of the Green Light District, a new Green Light District, which isn't at quite as green as we want it to be yet, but <laughs> it's talking about uh, alternative medicine kind of things and uh, new age kind of district, I, I suppose. But they did open a store, I believe, that also has, um, while they're selling herbal medicines, if you come in, it's not a dispensary, but if you come in with a, with a card, you can purchase cannabis kind of behind the, behind the counter, I guess like your cold medicines now that, <laughs> that have pseudo, pseudo uh, what do you call them? What, those kinds of things. Um, so it's softened up the city and, and it's made it more receptive to, to reform. So that's a good thing and more open to medical marijuana access. In Santa Barbara, they had two meetings and they found that the cops are cooperating and, but they're still arresting people. And now they're, they find, the cops have a you know, real knack for finding the loopholes in the laws. And what they've done is, while they're not arresting, going out and just arresting everybody on the street, if they are called in on some kind of other kind of crime and they happen to smell marijuana or happen to see some marijuana, they still are arresting people for that, unfortunately. So they are finding a way around it. But uh, Dr. Behrman reports that um, the city council and the elected officials are very well aware that, that it, one with 66% in Santa Barbara, our most conservative, consider, it was considered our most conservative city that, that we had it in, with 66% of the vote they won. So it is emboldening supporters and it's making it much more of a safe issue. And we do have some people here um, who are sitting on oversight committees and if you're here, David uh, Behrman, Dr. Behrman, Brendan Hamm, and Patrick Formey are all on the Santa Barbara Committee. Are you here? If you are, raise your hand or something. Okay. And then um, if you'd like to talk to people about the Oakland, how that Oakland's Measure Z, which passed in 2004, David, uh, Dale Geringer and James Anthony are also on those oversight committees, and they're here at the conference, too. Right over there, okay. So an in my favorite part of the campaigns are always the endorsement part of the campaign, where you get the noteworthy people from uh, respected members of the community, the respected uh, local organizations, and uh, elected leaders to stand up and say that they are supportive of this policy. We can use them on our mailers, which we do. And so they're now on record. And despite uh, some hostile media in Santa Cruz, we got a lot of great support, all the support of the Democratic Party clubs and the progressive leaders. And we must all, all uh, hail the California Nurses Association <laughs> who came out in support of all of our initiatives and all of our efforts. And they've just been wonderful. And I'll tell you, once you get to put them on your mailer, it's a really e much easier to get your other endorsements after that. If you say the California Nurses Association supports it, um, then they're more likely to, to also. So the greater goal of this statewide initiative and ordinance campaign really was to create a groundswell so that we could ultimately translate into, the, into statewide reform. Now that hasn't happened yet, and that's really disappointing to me. But um, possibly one of the reasons is that while we were successful in getting this passed, we didn't create a groundswell of activism at the same time to follow through at the state level, which we need. In Santa Barbara and San Francisco, we have great oversight committees. Uh, you know, it's just a stellar committee with uh, people that were hand, well, kind of handpicked, but <laughs> they were handpicked. But what they, what we also did was um, have qualified seats, like a, one uh, representative of the harm reduction community, a civil liberties advocate, those kinds of.